All right, what's up, guys? I'm gonna show you guys how to make this uh, sort of kill the noise talking growl bass. Uh, so the way I did it was I used a recording of my voice, a vocoder, and a massive patch I made. So it sounds very simple, but there is a lot of complicated things going on. But once you guys, if you guys don't know of this technique, then uh, you're gonna learn a lot of cool stuff. But once you got this sort of technique down, it's very easy to do, and it's probably the easiest way to get the most filthy talking bass sounds ever. Like, really. Like, especially if you're using FM synthesis with this sort of thing. But uh, that doesn't really matter. Uh, what I'm going to show you guys is uh, first the audio track here. And I'm just going to play it with the vocoder off so you guys can hear the original. Uh, recording of this so uh this is just my voice talking and i'll let you guys hear it so as you can see i wasn't saying anything i wasn't trying to mimic like a wobble or anything i was just you know just messing around making some random noises and uh once i turn on the vocoder now it's gonna uh, now it's receiving information from the patch i made so which is just a uh, massive patch. I'll show you guys how to make that in a sec. And uh, so now that's receiving the audio from the uh, massive, now it's going to modulate it. And you so it went from sounding like this to this. So you can do this with any kind of uh, original audio. You can do this with. Uh, just about a lot of things and it's a really unlimited possibilities to a sound design sort of thing so you could use this for so much more than just making uh, growl talking bases but I know you guys want to learn how to do that so let's get into it I'll show you guys what I did here on the vocoder so as you can see here I just uh, I went to external right here which allows me to select audio from another source and uh, I went here and I selected my 17 massive which is the uh, patch I made and I made sure I was on post FX so that way I'm getting the signal from right after the path of where all my uh, little extra external processing happens so if I went here into pre FX I would just get the sound straight out massive but going to post that means I get all of these things in the signal with it so that's where you want to be right here with post and uh for this you guys can just sort of copy that down I'm not gonna really go into explaining what these do because vocoders are uh, not complicated but there's uh, just some things you should know and uh, the cool thing about vocoders is that i can shape the sound however i want using this box here and I brought it up to 28 bands, so I just have more bands to play with. So I'm just going to leave a uh, blank right now so that uh, I can just, you guys can hear how it is for the sake of tutorial. But uh, yeah, you could definitely use this to craft the sound even more. And uh, let's see. I just brought up the depth a bit so the more it is to the left the more it sounds like what's uh, where it's getting the audio from so in that case that's massive and the more I turn it to the right the more it starts to sound like the clip so you can kind of play around with that I kind of you know you can have it all the way up at a hundred and it'll sound really cool <laughs> So I'll leave it right around 60% where I had it at. And uh, for attack, I just it's all the way down. Release is at 150 milliseconds. Dry wet's all the way up. And that's pretty much it. You probably noticed that I grouped this uh, vocoder so that I could uh, get a little bit of macros right here on this. Uh, there's two ways you can get. You can use macros in Ableton. You can press Command M and you can select any parameter 
inside of Ableton or inside of a VST inside of Ableton and uh, you'll be able to control it with a keyboard or you could just press command G once you've selected something like uh, or like anything so if I'm just gonna make an example of this compressor I'm just gonna press command G it's now grouped and now when I pull this little circle out I can assign any of these parameters to a macro but I don't want to do that because it's a compressor and uh, let's see okay so to do that you just press map you select on the parameter you want in this case it was formant and then I just dragged it over here and uh, the really the reason why I brought this into its own little macros so I could play around the formant of the sound and I'll show you guys I'll just show you guys what I'm what that does <laughs> So yeah, that's the kind of stuff you can do. You can uh, automate this and uh, really get some crazy stuff out of it. So uh, if you guys don't know how to use automation in Ableton Live, uh, you pretty much select on this parameter here and it gives you the automation path for it here. So if I click on something else like, uh, let's see, I click on the ratio of my compressor, you can see just by clicking on it, it's giving me the automation for it. And now I'm going to click back into form and sound. And uh, I'm just going to press Command B. Um, if you're on PC, that might be something like Alt or no, that wouldn't be right. Uh, control. That would be Control for you guys, I think, on PC. And uh, so now, let me, where did my pencil tool go? So, okay. Now I can just draw in automation and you can see that this was moving according to what was going on here but uh, and also you don't want to have you know with some things you don't want to have it so square and pointy so you might want to just make it uh, I mean so square so you want to make it kind of pointy so it kind of glides so you know that's just uh, I'm just showing you guys that for for whatever you guys are going to use this for, you guys can uh, just go ahead and play around with that. And uh, like I said, just some compressing here, some side chaining, and sausage fanners, just adding a little bit loudness and color, just because it's a little quiet by itself. And that's that. So I've explained everything that's going on with the vocoder. Let's get into massive to end this video. Again, all that's going on here is some compression, some sidechain compression, and a wow filter, and some EQ. I'm going to turn off the wow filter so you guys can just hear the patch by itself. And with it on. So yeah, wow filter plays a nice part into this and adds more character into it, but uh, we're just going to make the patch by itself real quick. So this uh, patch is going to be uh, included in my next uh, massive preset pack along with some uh, well maybe not this exact one but I'm going to well now that I'm showing it to you guys and now I have to make another one because <laughs> you guys aren't going to buy something that you've already seen how to make but uh, yeah I'll probably make whatever ends up in the pack a lot sicker I just kind of threw this all together real quick uh, because I just wanted to make a vocoder talking bass thing anyway so let's uh, get into this and you're gonna want to go new sound by the way just so you have a clean slate here inside a massive and now you're ready to go to voicing which will be the first thing we do we're gonna select uh, six we're gonna leave this on 16 and bring this up to two that's our voicing right here and we're gonna put this on monophon and legato and now we're gonna go over here to our oscillator tab and we're gonna turn on the oscillator phases so what this does is it starts all the waves or oscillators at the same point uh, over and over so between each MIDI trigger and whatever it sort of kind of plays it over again so that just helps make the sound more consistent and less random and then I just brought up the glide a bit and that's pretty much it for these tabs. There's no uh, LFOs or anything like that going on. And um, 
now we're going to go into oscillator one. So oscillator one is just a fenders one and it's on bend minus. All the oscillators here are on bend minus plus. So you can put them all to bend minus plus. All their amps are up all the way. All the um, filters one and two, they're right down the middle in between all those. And uh, for filter, uh, and you can see that wavetable position and intensity up are all the way in uh, are all the way up in oscillator one and this is just down an octave and I dragged in a macro here so I just clicked on the uh, little crosshair here and I just dragged it in here and I left it at zero. Oh, and I'll throw in a quick tip uh, if you're inside massive and you're holding down option key or I think on PC that'd be the alt key you can uh, quickly go up and down the octaves holding down option or alt just like that so that's a quick way to move up and down through octaves in the pitch boxes here in massive and uh, yeah it's just so much better than clicking up and down and stuff like that so okay oscillator 2 now this one's also down an octave this is a disto and uh, this is of course like I said earlier a bend minus plus wavetables up all the way intensities all the way down and uh, you're gonna bring in this macro here and drop uh, drop it uh, sorry guys I'm just, like sounding like a retard here can't even speak you're gonna drop this in here and uh, you're gonna drag it up all the way to the right and uh, amp is up all the way oscillator 3 we're gonna use this wave right here and uh, this is a good digital wave that I like to use which is kind of an interesting combination with the analog electric stuff and uh, just again we're gonna leave we're gonna leave the pitch right here at zero we're going to bring our wavetable position all the way down we're gonna drag in this macro here which I called master because it controls everything inside of it so it is like the master macro and it's gonna just uh, we're gonna dr drop it in here drag it all the way to the right intensity is uh, where it is by default which is just a little bit above the end of this right here so it's not all the way up but it's like a little bit right there you see where amp is and that's that for oscillators now let's go into our modulation oscillators so all I did here was I selected my third oscillator and it just put the phase on it so w you can see that I can select uh, my oscillators here with this little window so I just clicked on three and that gave me that and I just brought the phase all the way down, dragged in the same macro that we used on the other oscillators, and we're just going to bring it up to here. And that's that for that. Now let's do feedback real quick. So feedback has been routed all the way to filter 2. And uh, you can see I dragged this up to like 3 o'clock. And I just dragged in this one macro right here into right here and uh, dragged all the way to the left. So that way... Uh, you can just drag it all the way down if you don't want feedback or all the way up if you do and let's see let's go into filter so this is just a comb filter pitch is all the way down dampening is all the way down but then we I brought in this uh, macro once again in here and dragged it and dropped it and brought this one up all the way and brought this one up to around here feedback is sort of pointing at the G right here and uh, this is up all the way and Notice real quick that my mass, uh, my mix one and two is just like four or three lines above the halfway mark. And um, for filter two, I selected a scream. Cutoff is right there in the middle. Uh, scream is kind of pointing right there. Rezo is at like three o'clock. And I dragged in that macro once again. Uh, let's do our inserts now that we're done with filters. Uh, this is just a, uh, a sign shaper. And you can see where I uh, drag those in, so you guys can copy that down and get those macros in there also. Uh, insert 2 is just a sign uh, sample and hold, I mean. So this is kind of doing some really interesting stuff with the uh, pitch and things like that. So dry wet's up all the way. Pitch is sort of around 9 o'clock. And okay, let's go into our FX1 now. So dry wet and size are sort of in the same position. They're kind of pointing towards nine o'clock. Dry wet's just sort of a little bit down and size is kind of a little bit above nine o'clock position. And uh, let's go into phaser. 
our phaser is doing some really cool stuff here so this is kind of important here uh, feedback and depth are kind of just a slightly above halfway rate is right smack down in the middle and uh, dry wet is all the way down and we're going to bring this macro in once again and place it around there and so what this does now that we're done with massive uh, you can see that I brought uh, I configured the macro that I called master which is uh, macro 2 which is on everything I brought it down here so I could click on it at real quick and then I get my automation channel right here and I can just draw in some uh, automation for that but I don't need to do that because I have my keyboard uh, if it didn't fall asleep on me it should be working there we go so you can see that I'm just moving that around and we're going to hear what this sounds like. So that's pretty cool. Let's. Da -da -da -da. Okay, actually, I think my automation went to my clip here. Yeah, so that's the automation that's going on. It went to my clip as it will do sometimes instead of right here so beware that sort of thing and uh, no so that's now the massive patch you've seen that uh, let me think okay there's one thing I'm I forgot to uh, mention and it's the wow filter so now we're gonna turn on the wow filter so you can so you can hear the difference between that so it's adding in even more of that talking characteristic so what you guys are going to want to do is go to uh, user and go to default or just uh, let's see I think that's where you go to for the default and once you go to the default you go up in here and select a band reject you're going to place the overdrive a little bit above 30 cut off above 300 slightly reso somewhere in between 70 and 100 and you're going to want to right click here on this center knob and you're going to want to bring the LFO up a bit so you can see that this little white line is the LFO that I dragged in see so you can see I could kind of do that sort of stuff here and uh, let's see the LFO is just on a 1 8 rate so you can see that and this is just a saw wave and the sensitivity is at negative 24 dB uh, mixes up almost all the way and uh, master is at 100 so the end result would be this right here and uh, let's see uh, that's pretty much it you guys so if you guys like this uh, let me know like and subscribe if you haven't already helps us out helps us know what you guys like and don't like so what if I get a lot of likes on this video then I know to keep kinda going further into these sort of sounds and stuff like that also you guys uh, if you guys have some time you, uh, you guys can check out some tutorials on my other channel uh, which is should be linked down below uh, I have more stuff kinda like this but uh, th for right now this is sort of the channel I'm mainly uploading on and uh, that's pretty much it you guys so uh, thanks for watching